all you've got. What happened is searching for your answer. It's over. Do you yield? <sighs> you won. Well then, looks like you found your answer. I give his glory to you. <sighs> I've seen that light. That is the light of our Lord, the great Hermanubis. Priest over all other priests. His spirit dwells within that lightning, and his will lives on. Once a warrior of Tynar, he emerged from the barren desert sands to serve the god king Al Ahmar. After the death of the god king, Hermanubis gathered his followers and the Tynarian priests and led them to the city of Tule Tula. There, they founded the Temple of Silence. And from that day forth, we became stewards of all knowledge that survived from King Deshret's civilization. Barely a century passed before war ravaged the desert. One by one, Aramite leaders took up arms against each other in battles that would devour what little remained of their civilization. Only the wise city of Tule Tula was spared under the guiding hand of the Tynarians. But peace did not last. Coveting the knowledge of King Deshret, the beasts set their eyes on Tule Tula. The king of Gurabad laid siege to the city and ordered the sages to surrender to him the Temple of Silence as proof of his victory. The ruling elite colluded with their oppressors, betraying the temple so as to hold on to their rule over the city. They declared that the knowledge guarded by the temple was the true cause of corruption. These were dark days, and we faced enemies on all sides. Our Lord had long since exhausted his strength keeping the forbidden knowledge introduced by King Deshret at bay. To ensure the temple's continued survival, he broke his being into many pieces and began the ceremony of Hermanubis's legacy, bestowing his power upon his mortal followers. With this power, the temple was able to defeat the tyrant's army. Yet, we were not hailed as heroes. Strange and unfamiliar as this power was, it struck fear into the people's hearts and drove them to reject us. In the end, the people of the temple and the Tule Tula Tynarians left the city for good and made their way to the rainforest. What followed next was inevitable. 
The elite of Tule Tula fell and were decimated. War engulfed the desert. And we wandered from place to place, always in hiding, all the while keeping close watch over our secrets and staying true to our mission. Betrayal forced us out of the desert and into the forest. Then mistrust drove us from the forest into the desert once more. We have lived in exile for far, far too long. Yet, today, the Temple of Silence has borne witness to the glory of Hermanubis once more. Thank you. Father. Hey, Sethos. You'll get through this. I know. I just... I'll miss him. I guess you were prepared for this. It's been a long time coming, huh? Yeah. Uh, he's... Been on death's door for a very long time now. I think it was only through sheer willpower that he managed to hold on to this point. At least, he was able to see this chapter come to a close before he passed. What's next for you? Per my grandfather's last wishes, the Temple of Silence should submit to whoever possesses the largest number of Hermanupus fragments. That entitles you to be our new leader, Sino. <sighs> but that's never going to work, as I'm sure you realize. I'm the General Mahamatra. I am needed back at the Academia. I did foresee this possibility, and I gave it some thought. The fact is, I know next to nothing about the staff, records, and environment here. As such, I am ill-suited to be your leader, Sethos. I believe the honor should go to you. Were it not for this duel, or indeed if you had other intentions, the Ba fragments would most likely be in your hands by now. I'm sure Ba Moon never meant for anyone but you to be his successor. <laughs> you really think so? I do. Still... I didn't think Bamoon looked very surprised by the final result. Perhaps he had an inkling that this would be the way things end. Well, in any case, since the Ba fragments are with me now, I guess I can call the shots. Sethos, I would like you to succeed Bamoon as the new leader of the Temple of Silence. You are more suited to the role than I, and I have complete faith that you will be an excellent leader. Just think of it as doing me a favor. Uh, but doesn't that render everything that we've been through up to now meaningless? <laughs> no, it doesn't. This experience has allowed us to become friends, which means that the Academia and the Temple of Silence will become partners once more. That's a much bigger deal than you might think, Sethos. You said yourself, times have changed. You have to believe that things can change for the better here at the temple, too. I will try. To be honest, I couldn't have asked for a better outcome. Actually, part of me wonders whether Ba Moon's intentions from the very beginning was just to create enough pressure to force us towards a duel that way. 
No matter who won, one of us would have to surrender our Ba Fragment, and the power of Hermanubis would be concentrated in one single person. Had you won, the Temple of Silence would have doubled its strength. And were I to win, he correctly anticipated that I wouldn't suddenly drop everything to become the leader of the Temple, much less integrate the Temple into the Academia by force. He knew that the Temple's future would depend not just on the guidance of Hermanubis, but the support of the Academia too. So he made it his responsibility to ensure his successor would be free from the burdens of the past. His plan meant that whoever ended up succeeding him, they would have an easier time interacting with the Academia. <laughs> with one single letter, he lured out the Professor. No matter what happened after that, it would result in a net benefit to the Temple. And here I thought the General Mahamatra wouldn't care for all these trivial details. You're absolutely right. Grandfather and I considered this from every angle. We had to find a way to mend our relationship with the Academia. In that sense, the right of duels was just a means to an end. Thank you for everything, Sino. As a gesture of our gratitude, to those that you and Lesser Lord Kusanali deem worthy, I will grant the honor of access to the Temple of Silence for their pursuit of knowledge. The Temple of Silence has a wealth of information on King Deshret's civilization, more than any other organization in existence today. In times when you need information that only we can provide, we will be here to support you. But you must be exceedingly careful with your selection of candidates, lest you lead humanity to repeat the same mistakes. By the way, Tainari, my grandfather was so happy to see you. You are a descendant of the Veluka Shuna, and we are the heirs to the will of Hermanubis. The story goes that King Deshra chose the sage Hermanubis from among the Tainarians and appointed him as his familiar. He went on to fight many valiant battles with his Tainarian companions. They always stood by each other, from the founding of the Temple of Silence to the fall of Tuleitula. The Tainarians who left Tuleitula joined their human counterparts in the rainforest. A few centuries later, when some of the group returned to the desert, many of the Tainarians chose to stay and put down roots in the rainforest. In all likelihood, those were your ancestors. How fascinating. My father once mentioned that I was named after the Tainarians, but I never knew that my forebearers had such a history with the Temple of Silence. I like this story. Uh, by the way, has anyone seen Cyrus? Ah, uh, yes. Cyrus. You'll probably find him in my grandfather's room. He wouldn't show it in front of me, but... I think he still has many fond memories of my grandfather. If it's true that you and your grandfather really planned for everything to turn out this way, then I guess he didn't really resent Cyrus as much as he appeared to. <laughs> Who knows? Perhaps all of us. You, me, and Cyrus. We're all just pawns in my grandfather's plan to set things straight. He was awful like that. Someone's got to make the decisions when history is at a crossroads. I will make a detailed report on all of this to Lesser Lord Kusanali, and arrange for an official delegation from the Academia to come and meet you in the desert. I'm sure you'll have lots to attend to in the days ahead, but once things return to normal, please come and visit the rainforest again. You should stay for a few days this time, and start to build some relationships. If we're going to work together, both sides have to get to know one another better. I will. All right, well, bye for now, everyone. I'll be seeing you. See you soon. Come hang out with us anytime.
What's the hurry? What were you thinking, gallivanting off into the desert alone at your age? What if you take the bucket, hmm? You told not a soul what you were up to, designated nobody to handle your affairs, and left everyone scrambling frantically to try and figure out how on earth to clean up the colossal mess you'd made! Oh please, will you stop your yelling? What other choice did I have? What do you mean, what other choice? Do you mean to tell me that after all your years of learning, and sagehood no less, the only idea you could conjure up in that white-haired walnut of yours was to shoot off into the unknown like some hot-headed 20-year-old adventurer? A one-man suicide mission, hmm? That's the best idea that one of the finest minds of a generation could come up with, is it? It astounds me that you survived the journey, and you're lucky that Ba Moon didn't finish you off when you arrived. All right, all right. Honestly, the way you're going off on me, it's like you wish you'd been there to lend him a hand. Does it mean nothing to you that I'm your colleague and former classmate? <sighs> I've got nothing more to say. What's the point of berating an old bag of bones? What do you mean, bag of bones? I'm a flesh and blood hero who, despite his old age, saved our General Mahamatra from being stripped of his powers. Okay, look. <sighs> Fine, I admit it, I was in the wrong. How can I make it up to you? What about, uh, a month's work at the Academia? <laughs> One month? Try three. Hainari's master is really laying into Cyrus. Um, let's give them a wide berth. <sighs> Professor brought this on himself. Don't pay any attention to him. Wow, I haven't seen Master get this riled up in a long time. The last time he chewed someone out like this must have been back when I was still a student. I think I'll go around and update everyone, tell them the situation's resolved. Want to come with me? We can go for dinner afterwards. My treat. You in? Makes sense. I'm in. Kale. Ah, you're back! Well, look who we have here. Would you mind explaining to me what has been going on this past few days? I heard you all ran off into the desert and got embroiled in a major catastrophe. All taken care of. That does not answer my question. How could you be so careless? That goes for you as well. Yes, and you too! When you run into problems, you really ought to ask for help, you know? I've been around the block. Don't you think it would have made sense to involve me? And let's not forget, I know the desert like the back of my hand. Now would not be a good time to attempt to argue with Farzan. You're yeah, right. Mm-hmm. It's not the first time that I've had to talk to you about this sort of thing either. You need to learn that there are times when the right thing to do is get a more experienced member of staff involved. Do I make myself clear? Because if you don't, I... <sighs> Kale... Please do something. He's giving me the signal. All right, guess it's time to play my ace in the hole. Um, say, Madam Farizan, I can see you're pretty upset, but, uh, I was just wondering. Remember that time you offered to give me a tour of the academia? Does that offer still stand? Huh? Uh, wait, did I hear that right? Kale, you remember? Wonderful. Well, of course the offer still stands. Come on, Madame Farozan will show you around the old classrooms. Poor Kale getting dragged off like that. Also, check out Farozan acting like some sort of official academia tour guide. <coughs> Kale, cup. Huh? What? Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> right. Hmm. What do you mean, cup? You need a cup. I can get you a cup. Oh, it's nothing. Just Master's way of reminding me to stay hydrated while I'm out and about. <laughs> hmm. 
It's code for, let's reconvene at the cafe. Tainari and I used it while we were in school, and it's become something of a family tradition now. Oh, that's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Two people left. Let's bring them along, too. What's the hurt? Am I hallucinating? Or do I see Kaveh and Alhatham engaged in... diligent studying? We're just reorganizing all the books we used. Look, there's a whole mountain of them. There's no rush. Nobody reads these books anyway. My sincere thanks to you both. Yes, with your help, we resolved the issue rather swiftly and painlessly. And the outcome was better than we could have hoped for. I see. The Temple of Silence resorted to rather unique means of self-preservation. It explains how they managed to remain hidden for so many years. And it sounds like they managed to preserve a whole load of ancient documents as well. I'd love to go check those out if I ever had the chance. That day will come. The Temple of Silence is a hugely important organization, and we'll be sure to maintain good relations with them in the future. Now, as a token of my appreciation, I'd like to treat everyone to coffee. <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, sounds great. Um, although after the last few days, I don't know if I can handle another coffee, but I can just order something else. Sure. Let's go. Thank you for com- And then, the Traveler just pounced on their opponent and knocked him right out cold! Then there was Tainari! He put up an amazing fight too! We ended up winning all three bouts! Whoa! Part of me wishes I'd been there to see it, but... I'd have been biting my nails off worrying about you guys. <laughs> A truly edifying account of the events. Bereft of detail, but it has livened up the room all the same. Hey, Paimon included all the juicy details. The Traveler just pounced and then waved their sword like this, then split around and blocked. Despite winning three bouts in a row, you still ceded the position of leader to him. That's very dignified of you, Sino. Of course. Being dignified comes with being a true champion. I got to be a champion too for once. I've not sparred much with desert folk before. It was a pretty unique experience. Yeah! Huge place! It felt like something right out of an epic poem! Imagine this. It was like there was... Maybe save that one for later, Paimon. Dessert's here. I think that'll do me for today. Shall we stop off at the House of Dana again before heading home? We should probably finish putting all those books back. My thoughts exactly. See you around. I should get going as well. See you all later. Make sure you get some good rest tonight. I need to go say thanks to the Core 30 for their help. Also, Sir Nephis says he wanted to introduce me to some of the Academia's work processes. So, I got a dash too. Kali's come a long way. She's much more confident at dealing with other people these days. Everyone's a work in progress. You never stop learning. Yeah, true. Ah, <sighs> that was good. It feels like everything's finally wrapped up now. Life is all 
all about these moments when you can finally relax and hang out with good friends after a job well done. And also, those desserts Sino got, they were really good. Paimon definitely needs more of those in the future. Do you three have anything planned for the rest of the day? If not, would you come somewhere with me? That's a secret for now. Wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. Okay. I think I can guess what you're talking about. It'll definitely be a nice surprise. Well, now Paimon's curious! Come on, let's go! Been a while since I last made my way up here. Oh, look at this place! We're so high up! Need any help? <laughs> As you wish. That's a nice spot, isn't it? What a great view! We're so high up, we can see for miles! Traveler, turn around. This is my secret base. Somewhere I only bring my best friends. When I was a student, I used to slip away and climb up here all the time, just to clear my head. I was quite young then, and hadn't made too many friends yet. Back then, I had a lot of the same questions that Sethos was asking. Who am I? Why do I have this power? And what should I be fighting for? Our gifts help us to find our rightful place in the world. That was my experience. And I'm sure Sethos will figure things out in his own time, too. <laughs> you two really are like brothers. I feel the same way. <laughs> of course. I see no need to be humble when it comes to the facts. I still remember one time when we came up here to chat and do our homework. Sino accidentally dropped a fruit. Luckily, he has fast reflexes, so he caught it just in time. That was the one and only time. Nothing will ever slip through my fingers again. <sighs> Those were good times. I kind of miss the student life. You know, Paimon really shouldn't be able to imagine Sino doing something like that, but for some strange reason, the mental image is coming through clear as day. Then make it stop. There's somebody there. Uh, it's Professor Cyrus. You guys carry on without me. I'll be right back. Okay. Huh? Hey, you're not supposed to jump down. Be careful. Oh my days. I can't believe how stupid I look in this one. <sighs> Professor, what are you muttering to yourself about? Sino, <laughs> just the man I'm looking for. Guess what I found in some old notebooks. <sighs> some old photos? Can you believe it? This notebook was just sitting in a pile of odds and ends in the Sage's office. I must have forgotten to take it with me, and no one's touched it since. It was still right there. I was at the Academia earlier to discuss my workload with Nephis. I swung by the old office to have a look around and just happened to cross it. Oh, time flies. Look how tiny you are in this picture. Still a kid! You look quite young yourself in that one. Ah, it's this one. I remember that. Lisa took it, didn't she? Yep. Looks like her work, all right. <laughs> Who else could have found just the right angle to make me look so unbelievably hideous? And this one. Looks like we're both dozing off. <laughs> Cheeky girl. Taking secret photos of us without our knowledge. Is there something you'd like to say to me, Professor? Like what? Like, these are good photos, aren't they? <sighs> hey, at moments like this, I... I hardly know where to begin. I can't pretend I'm a good person. But Moon had every reason to despise me. 
Well, so do you, if you feel the same way. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, you old codger. Ugh. Is that not what you wanted me to say? Oh, I've dreamt of that place many times after leaving the desert. Sometimes I've dreamed that I was doing research with them again. And other times, I dream of the day they saved my life. Oh, it was... one of the happiest times of my life. We all learned so much from one another. You've matured so much over the years, Sino. Since you're my professor, I should save you some face by not calling you out on all the non-answers you just gave. So, I will do the right thing and keep my mouth shut. Hmm. <laughs> Good thinking. Take your own advice next time. Seriously, why bully an old man like me? I thought heroes were supposed to be gracious. Hey, wait. Uh, how did I not notice this one earlier? <laughs> Lisa strikes again. Just how many did she take? Look how cute you were when you were little. <laughs> I remember how well-mannered you were back then, too. Yeah, and look how serious and professional you used to be. Oh, I can't compete with you anymore. First you get better than me at the deadpan jokes, and now... You're besting me at those little quips, too. <laughs> Don't say that. I still have a lot of respect for you. <laughs> That's more like it. Hey, what would you say to meeting up with Lisa again sometime? <laughs> I'd like that. Let's find a time and pay her a visit in Mondstadt. All right, I'll add it to my schedule. Let's go next week. Wait, no. Next week is the tomato growing competition. I have got to beat Zaha Hadi. Or you could find a real hobby, Professor.